Well, hello everybody and welcome to another Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar presented by Product Support from Autodesk. Today's topic will be back to basics, an introduction to blocks in AutoCAD 2017, 2016, really it's all the same in most versions recently. Uh, I'm presenting, my name is Zach, with me today presenting will be Michael and moderating normally would be Naman and Bryce, but I think Naman's not with us today, so it'll just be Bryce and the questions portion of the webinar interface, so any questions you have along the way, feel free to ask as we go through. So a little bit about us. Uh, I am uh, based in Lake Oswego, Oregon office, and I support AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT, AutoCAD Electrical, AutoCAD for Mac, uh, Michael is with us from Boston today. Uh, he's out there supporting Civil 3D. Uh, Naman is one of our expert elites. He's out of Cincinnati. And then we have Bryce, who is also here in the Lake Oswego, Oregon office, supporting AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, and all manner of other AutoCAD-based products. So please do, if you have questions as we go along, leave them in the questions section. And we'll get to those at the end if we have time. We usually do have a little bit of time, so we'll try to pad that in there. Uh, the session will be recorded, and we will post these to YouTube on our YouTube channel. And the links will be available, as well as the slide deck and any files that we use here. And we do these every week on Thursdays. We do have four tracks that we go through and as you can see there on the left we have upcoming webinars that cover for the next month. Uh, we'll do, be doing some beyond the basics, doing constraints next week. Week after that we'll be talking about materials as they relate to 3D objects and 3D modeling in AutoCAD. June 16th is the tips and tricks. And Dave will be going through an introduction to, uh, introduction to AutoCAD MEP. And then back on the 23rd, we'll be back to our track, the Back to Basics, and we'll be talking about viewports and layouts. Uh, as always, if you miss this or any other webinar and you want to see them again, they are up on our YouTube page, and we'll have links throughout to find those. Our Knowledge Network has a lot of links to help you get into the program. Uh, and find out what you need to find to get things done. Uh, and by no means are they replacements for good old training, and uh, that, that extends to these webinars as well. We shouldn't take these as full training. We're merely going through some of the features and showing you some things that you might want to incorporate into your workflows. And that's really the, the emphasis of these webinars, is just to get you a little bit more familiar with some of the interface and some of the options in the program and the commands that maybe you didn't know about, maybe you always wondered about and and wanted to know more about, and that's why we're doing these, so just to provide some further information. So what we're talking about this week is blocks, and we're going to go through the defining, creating, editing, and ultimately reusing blocks and show you why that will be helpful in your workflows going forward in AutoCAD. So let's get started. Let's talk about what are blocks. <clears throat> blocks are nothing more, nothing less than a collection of AutoCAD entities that are combined into a <clears throat> more complex object. A block definition resides within the database of each individual drawing, and a block reference is an instance of the block that's already existing in the drawing. Now, there are a couple different ways that people use blocks. People often use blocks that are defined within a DWG file, and you can define unlimited amounts of blocks within an individual DWG file. Or you might also have geometry defined in an individual DWG that you use the whole DWG as its own block and for insertion into other drawings as you work. Some reasons why we use blocks, uh, instead of having to draw things over and over again, it sure is nice to be able to block them together, store them, and then reuse them. It also, and this is something that often gets overlooked, but I, I want to emphasize this, 
if you take 18 uh, groupings of objects and you save the file without having any of them as part of blocks, the file size will be larger than if you had one grouping of those 18 defined as a block and then you had 18 instances of the block in your file. And uh, I went through in this preparation for this and I did some testing there and it's, it's pretty significant how you can keep your file sizes down by using blocks. So that's one unseen benefit that largely goes overlooked, but I want to point that out here. Also, company standards, you work in a firm, everybody's producing output to go to clients, and title blocks, company standards, everybody wants to be using the same thing so that there's a consistency among the work produced by your firm. And that's where blocks really can come in handy as well. So, let's see how this all works in AutoCAD. At this point, I will hand things over to Mike, and he will go through definition of blocks with us. Thanks, Zach. So let me show you my screen here. All righty. So as Zach mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and show you a little bit about blocks in AutoCAD LT. So this is actually going to be in AutoCAD LT 2017, but as Zach mentioned, you know, it's basically it stays the same. Uh, you can do this in 2016, 2017, regular AutoCAD, um, and some of the other verticals as well. So first off, what I'm going to do is show you how to actually insert a block into your drawing. Um, here, I'm going to have a sample floor plan. And you're going to notice that there's a few chairs. Um, so Mike, these chairs are actually already here. Oh, can't see it. All right, yeah. one sec. I can't anyway. Maybe everybody oh, missing it. I'm not seeing it. Let me see if I can get this up. All right. How about... Mm, while we're doing that, while we're getting that ready, let me throw out a couple of polls here just to get things started out. Um, as we often do, we want to know, is this your first Autodesk Help webinar? And most of the time, we've got a lot of returning clients, but in this case, uh, uh, we'll see how this goes. Give everybody a couple of more seconds here to finish up. And we'll take a look at the results here. Looks like we're over 80% here, so I think I'm going to call that. We'll share the results with you there. An overwhelming number of you coming back for a repeat visits with us, and we certainly appreciate that. And for you newcomers, welcome. We hope you learned something here, and again, as we always say, it's not really a substitute for classroom training at AutoCAD, as you can get at your local resellers and Autodesk training centers, but it's just more a way to focus on uh, sharing information and, and getting you some, some information about commands and, and areas of the program you may not have explored before. Uh, next up, we want to know which program you use. So if you could give us some information about that, just go ahead and choose which one you use. It helps us go forward and prepare the content for these webinars as, as tailored towards our audience. Looks like we're just about finished on that one there. So a little bit over 80% there. We'll go ahead and close this one out and show the results. I think last time it was mostly AutoCAD LT, so that switched a little bit here. But it's good to know we've got all walks of AutoCAD represented here. And lastly, this one I want to cover right now before we get into it with Michael is related specifically to blocks. And just curious as to how you work with blocks, whether you 
make your own, whether your company makes your own and they specifically say don't make your own, or if you just randomly go out and get them online, find them, download them, use them that way, or you know, if you're completely uh, unfamiliar with the concept of blocks, that's okay too, perfectly fine for that. So that's why we're here and we're going to go through what a block is, how to define it, various things that go along with it. So we'll give a couple more moments here for this poll on block usage. And we'll go ahead and close it out here and share the results. Looks like the majority of you are pretty familiar with creating blocks. A lot of you have standardized blocks with your companies and uh, uh, yet others of you going out online and getting them. I would point out that uh, on one online resource that we have is our Seek website. So that's seek.autodesk.com which has a lot of uh, open source uh, free DWG blocks that you can pull down as well as for other of our products as well and some of them come in PDF format so it's a good place to get blocks from. All right. So, Alrighty, there's a let me see if it'll go through now. Yep, that's it. Zach, let me know when you can see my screen up there. We'll do. And you're under the option for show screen clean, yeah? There you are. Very good. Looks like you're all set. Alrighty. So, cool. So sorry about that earlier. Um, had a little bit of technical difficulties, but uh, I guess this sort of stuff happens when you're trying to do a live demo. But um, yeah. So over here on my screen, I'm gonna kind of show you how to do a few things with blocks within. AutoCAD LT. This is the latest version, so 2017. But as we had mentioned before, it's kind of the same um, from year to year. Not too much cha has changed with blocks. Um, so first off, I'm going to show you how to actually insert a block into the drawing. So first off, you're going to go up here. I'm going to show you how to do it through the, the ribbon. So you're going to go to the Insert tab up here. Then Blocks, Insert. And then for this um, actual drawing, what I'm, I'm going to try to put in a dining room table. So there is, you know, it's prompting me to, as to where I actually want to place this table. I'm going to place it between these chairs. And there you go. So now I have like, you know, a nice little arrangement over here. All the chairs are individual blocks, and then I also have the table block. So you're going to notice that the table block is a little bit different, um, you know, to, besides being a totally different shape because obviously it's a table. Um, it's actually a different color. Um, and the layer that it came in was the zero layer. So if that ends up happening to you, all you have to do is just click on it, and you could actually change layer in the, you know, the properties over here. So I'm going to switch it over to the iFern layer. So now the table is in the same layer as all the chairs. So um, I'm going to actually show you some of the things that you could edit when you're actually inserting the block into your drawing. I'm going to kind of go back. You're going to notice that at the bottom of the screen in the command the command bar, there's a few options, and I'm just going to quickly run through them just so you can get a better feel as to what um, you know what things you can edit when you're actually trying to go through this um, inserting block. Um, so the first one is base point. If you press B, this actually lets you select where you're going to be gripping the block from. So if you want to you know, grip it from a specific corner, you can go ahead and do that. Let me press B again. I could actually change, you know, edit that where I'm gripping it from. It doesn't even have to be on the block itself. I could edit, you know, um, edit where I'm gripping the block from. 
Um, so the next option is scale. So scale actually lets you scale the block in the different axes. So you'll notice that it's an X, Y, and Z axis. Um, you could actually do it, you know, you could scale it um, in just one axis and not have it um, adjust for the other ones. There's options later on that I'll go through. Um, but for now, this one, I'm just going to show you how to edit or how to change the scale for the block in a particular axis. So this is going to be on the X axis. And then I'm going to make the table twice as long. Oh, let me go back. There you go. Oh, it's actually changing them all. Okay. Well, scale. I'm going to give it one more shot over here. Ah, it's, so what's going on here, it's actually scaling the entire block. But, um, so this one actually, it's scaling the X, Y, and the Z axis, but you'll have specific blocks and you'll actually be able to specify the axis. So if you want to make the table twice as long, you could do that through there. Um, the last option is the rotate. So that's pretty self-explanatory. You could rotate the insertion of the block. So if you want to have it 90 degrees, there you go. If you want to bring it back to the default, just press R and space twice and it'll bring you back. Um, so for you keyboard warriors out there, you actually don't have to go through the ribbon to insert a block. You can actually just type insert. And this little pop-up window will come up. So you'll notice here that you have basically very similar options to what was coming up to the screen, on the screen before, um, except that you actually have it on a pop-up window. Um, you'll have the scale, rotate. You could specify the insertion point on the screen here. Um, but one of the cool things is that you could actually look for blocks on your computer, or on a you know, network location if you're working at a company that has blocks stored elsewhere. Um, so you would just click browse and you could actually you know, look for the blocks that you actually need. Um, a lot of times the blocks won't actually show up here. All this does is it'll, these are the blocks that are currently in the drawing that you're in. Um, so that is a good tool or good way to find the blocks that you need. One other thing is if you go to more options, you'll notice that the same little pop-up window comes up. So I'm going to try to insert the table again through here. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go to home. I'm going to change my current layer to the iFurniture layer, the iFurn one, and you're going to see how that changes the table or the block that I'm inserting. There you go. So the block actually took on the active layer and it makes me not, you know, I don't have to go through the step of selecting it and going to the layer and changing it to the layer that I actually want to use. Um, so there you have it. There's uh, two different ways of inserting blocks into the drawing. Um, you have either have the ribbon or the command line. There's other ways, but for now I'm just going to show those two. Um, so now moving on, um, I'm going to show you how to actually define blocks and a few of the you know, tips and tricks that you could do with that. Um, you're going to notice that there is another chair over here. This one's actually a little bit different than the other ones. This one has slightly longer armrests. That'll come into play a little bit later. Um, and another thing that you'll notice is that it is not a block. So you could actually go in and select the specific line work. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go back up here to the ribbon. I'm going to press insert, create a block, create block. And then where did the window go? 
There you go. All right. So once you press the create block, this little window will come up and it'll ask you for the block uh, block definitions. So for this one, I'm going to create a new block. I'm going to call this one new chair. Um, for the base point, I'm going to spec specify this on screen. So once we press OK on this block definition, it'll actually ask me where I want to, you know, have the base point for this block. So that'll come into play a little bit later. Um, but if you don't want to specify it on screen, you could actually go in there and edit the points manually. So as for objects, again, I'm going to, you could select objects to specify on screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select object. I'm going to select this guy. Um, then it gives you some more options. So this is kind of after this block definition, we're done with this block definition, you could choose to delete the line work, convert the current line work to a block or just retain it. Um, it also lets you play around with the behavior of the block. So you could have an annotative. I'm not going to go over um, annotation and, you know, annotative items, objects, and scales that, it's, that actually gets covered in another future webinar. Um, you could also do the scale uniformly. So the problem that I ran into before where the I was trying to edit the scale and the whole block was edited, you could actually set it so that you could, you know, edit all the scales at once. So you can edit all the scales at once or you could just specify specific, specific axes and then, you know, play around with the scale that way. Another option that you have is the exploding. So you can allow the block to be exploded or prevent users from exploding it if you don't want anybody touching it. Um, another cool thing is you could add a description. So if you want to add a little bit more information about this specific block, um, it also gives you the option to open it in a block editor so you can go in and make some more fine, like, fine adjustments. Um, for now, though, I'm going to keep this as is. I'm going to specify this as the insertion point. And since I selected delete, the chair is gone. So now I'm going to go back. What I showed you guys before, I'm going to insert block. You're going to notice that there's a new chair block. And there you go. So now we have created our own new block. Um, one cool thing that you could do with that block definition um, window is, let me use the oops command to bring back the old line work that we just deleted. So for those that aren't uh, familiar with the oops command, it's kind of like an undo, except it doesn't actually undo. So if I undo it, I could have brought back the, the chair but it would have gotten rid of the block that we created. So just want to bring back the line work. Use that oops command. There you go. Chair is back. I'm going to go back to the create block. I'm going to name this one. Actually, let me show you why I'm going to do this. this these blocks are actually called chair one. So I'm going to go create block, and I'm going to search for them. So chair one. And then what I'm going to do is kind of do the same exact steps that I did to create this block in the first place. So it's going to specify the base point on screen, select the object, I'm going to leave everything as is, and I'm going to press OK. Now what's going to happen is the program is going to say, hey, you already have a few instances of that chair one block in the drawing. What do you want to do? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say redefine the block, specify the insertion point, and great. So I'm going to show you what actually happens in a little bit, but some place that this could be useful is let's say if you, you know, finished inserting all the blocks into your drawing and you decide, hey, you know what, I actually don't want those chairs, I prefer longer armrests. Um, one option is you can, you know, create this new chair block, you know, enter a different block, go in, delete all the old ones and replace them, or you could do what I just did, go to, the, you know, redefine the block, go here, and now you'll notice that all the chairs were changed with, were replaced with that new chair block and the extended armrests. So, yep, yeah, um, there's 
that's uh, some of the things that you can do when you're uh, defining and creating blocks. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Zach so that he can continue showing you guys some more about blocks in AutoCAD. Hey, Zach, you there? Yeah, I sure am. So okay. let me know when you see me there. I think my AutoCAD's on screen. Yeah, I can see it. You're up. All right. So what I want to cover here are things that you can do, an extension of what Michael was covering, and what things you can do once you have your blocks in your drawing. So I've got a blank drawing here. I'm going to start. I'm just going to go do an insert, which is the letter I, or you can do it from the ribbon, as Mike showed you there. So I'm going to browse, and I'm going to pull in this chair drawing file. And we'll put it here. That's fine. Now, if we take a look at the things that this that came in with this block, before, when I started this brand new drawing, I just had layer zero, and that's it. And now if I look at my layers, I have a seat layer, a seat finish layer, seat other, uh, these these other layers that don't have any color specified, these used to be for attributes that were in this block, but I, I got rid of the attributes, so in reality I could probably get rid of the layers too. But I just wanted to show that when you bring a block in, any layers that were defined in the block, that's what also is shown. Uh, those layers come into the drawing definition when you bring a block in. So the main way that we have to edit blocks is the block editor. And that's B edit. Or if you simply select a block, you can right click it and you can choose to go into the block editor. Now within the block editor, everything that isn't a block, and you can have blocks within blocks, everything that isn't a block will show up as its regular object type. For example, these are polylines. I think everything in here is polylines, if I'm not mistaken. Let's take a look at the properties palette. Yep, it looks like we've got five polylines here, as you can see, and they're all on the seat layer. So what I wanted to do was take a couple of these objects and I can move them to different layers within the definition of the block. So I'm going to put these on, say, the other layer. Now, as you see there, the color is obtained by layer. And the other layer that I put these on, it doesn't have any specified color at this point. So that's the color that will be it'll just be black or, or white, depending on whether your background is black or white. So uh, let me take this other one here, and I'm going to change it to... I'm going to change it to get its color by block. And we'll see what that is in just a minute here, because by block, by layer, and by object are things that uh, the definitions, I think they're important to know. A lot of people are kind of mysterious about what by block is. They never use it. They just either do individual, they set the color, or they set it by layer, and they just skip over the by block. And I'll show you what by block is for. Uh, you may decide to work it into your workflow, or you might not. But having the knowledge is good, so you can take it forward and do what you like with it. So now that I've made these changes to this block, I'm going to close out of the block editor, and I'm going to say yes, that I do want to save the changes to the chair. So right away, we can see that these objects here that are not blue, that we moved to other layers, are not, uh, they're, 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 it may seem like that they're all getting their color by what the layer they're on is, and it's not exactly true. So if we change the color on this other layer to green, the two objects whose color we set to inherit their color by layer, they inherit the color. Now the other object, if we go back in be edit here, we take a look at the other object that we changed layers on, this one, we put it, uh, actually we didn't move it to the seat layer, sorry. I was going to change it to a different layer. So let's go to seat view, right? And again, its color is by block. 
not by layer, but it's on the seat view layer. So let's close out and save that change. So now if we go to the seat view layer and we change its color, nothing happens to this object that we put onto that layer. And that is because it's set by block. Now what does by block inherently mean? Let's take a look at that. If we select the block and we look at the block in the properties palette, the whole block is set to get its color inherited by layer. Now, since we've set things the way we have, the only object that's really doing that are the objects that are blue. Because they're on the seat layer, the seat layer happens to be blue. The other objects that are not blue, we've either set to be on other layers or to get their colors in other ways. Now, if we change the entirety of the block to, say, yellow, for example, the only thing that changed is the object that we set to be by block. So everything else inherits its functionality, its properties from other methods, like from the layer that it's on, or from we set independent colors for them. We could do that too. But in this case, since we've set the whole block to be yellow, the only object that takes its color being yellow is an object that we set to be by block. Now, Sometimes things will arrive at your doorstep and they'll be out of sync like this. And the originator may have done it on purpose. They had a specific reason in mind why they set things this way. But you might not want them that way. Now you can go into the block editor and you can edit the block and select everything. And maybe you want it all to be on one layer. Or maybe you want it to all get their colors by, by layer and only by layer. And that's it. And that's fine too. You can do that. But another way to do, you know, let's say you want everything to be by layer, but you don't want to go into the block editor. There is an easier way to do that. And the command there is set by layer. We'll just pick the block here. And it's going to ask us if we want to change the objects that are currently set to by block to by layer. We'll say yes to that. And do we want it to include blocks? Yes. So that which was yellow is now magenta. And it is magenta because the seat view layer on which that object resides is that color. So if we now subsequently go into our block definition here, and we select this object that was by block previously, and we look at it in the properties palette, we now see that it's set for by layer. And that's the power of the set by layer command. In fact, if we select the whole thing, all the objects, we see that all the objects have their color set to by layer. No matter which layer they happen to be on, they're inheriting their color specifically from the layer that they reside upon. So that's the difference between setting things to be by block or by layer or by object. Hopefully that clarifies any doubts or questions you might have had by that. So let's get into another way to make blocks and that is by using the W block command. Uh, Mike showed you the block command, which you can select objects and create a block definition within your current drawing. So if we take a few objects here and we copy them and, and let's see, how about here and here and here, let's make just a, so if we take these objects, we can do block and define a block that's going to reside within this existing drawing. It's going to be a block definition inside this drawing. Now, we may not want to do that. We may want to take these objects and, and imagine you've got several other objects in your drawing and you just want to take a few of them and make them their own drawing. That's easy to do. All we need to do is select the objects that we want and we'll issue the command to write block, which is W block. 
Now the def destination is going to be in your documents folder by default, but of course you can use the button over here to browse for any location you like to store the new block, and you can also change the name of the new block and let's call it, yeah, maybe call it my new block. You can pick your base point, and that's going to be the insertion point that's used whenever you take the new drawing. And let's say we want to make it the geographic center of this whole thing. That should be right there. Say OK to that. And now this path here, this My New Block, it's going to make a new DWG file in that location. Now, you could do entire drawing if you wanted all of the objects in your drawing to become a new drawing file. But in this case, we just want the specific object we've chosen. And it shows us that that's what we're doing here. It shows us how many we have. So let's go ahead and say OK there. And now, if we were to go and do an insert, now that does nothing to change the fact that these objects here are still the same objects they were. They're still a circle and, and polylines. But if we went to do an insertion now, we could browse the Documents folder, and we would have that My New Block. There it is right there. Insert it. And we could rotate it and give it a 45 degree angle here. And, and there it is. And if we check its properties, we see that it is indeed a block. If we explode it, it returns it back to its individual objects from which it was made. Now, I would like to point out that just because you explode a block, that doesn't do anything to get rid of the block definition within your drawing. So let's back up a couple steps here to where we didn't have this block in this current drawing. So if I go in to do an insert, my list of blocks in this current drawing is empty because I don't have any block definitions in this file. So that should change when I put in the My New Block into this. There it is. And let's do the 45 degree angle, because it's fun. All right. Now, when I go to do an insert, I do now have that in my list of blocks that I can insert, because it's now defined within my drawing database. Now, if I take this block and I explode it, it reverts it back to its independent components. However, if I go to do another insert, you see that my new block is still an option there. And I can indeed insert it, and it will be a block. Now, if you didn't want to, keep the block definition within your current drawing, you can purge the block definition out. But in order to do that, there can be no current instances of the block in your drawing. So right now, if I did a purge, I'm showing items that I can purge. You notice here that the block section doesn't have a plus next to it because there aren't any blocks defined in this file that I can purge. They're all in use. There's all a current instance. So if I take the only current instance of the block in this file, and I delete it, and if I then go back to purge, now the block section is available for me, and the My New Block is one that I can now purge out of my drawing. And the result of that is the next time I go to do an insert, my list of blocks that are defined in this drawing is now empty. Now, if you're inserting a DWG file, like we were doing here, this My New Block, for example, you notice that the insertion point is, as we defined it, the geographic, the geometric center 
of the objects. Now, you may want to change that. You may want it to be a one corner of the square. You can easily redefine the insertion point for your blocks by going into the block editor, choosing your block, and your authoring palettes over here, various parameters you can set. The key one we're interested in here is the base point parameter. Now the base point currently is the center of all these objects, but it's now asking me to specify a parameter location. Let's say I want it to be this corner. So I'm going to snap to that end point of that corner. Now that's going to be my insertion point anytime I insert an instance of this block. So let's see how that works. So let's do an insertion. And now you can see where the crosshairs are. The crosshairs indicate where the insertion point is. Now, what does the insertion point matter? The insertion point matters for various things, like when you're going to move a block, where's the grip going to be? That's where the grip's going to be, is the insertion point or the base point of your block. Also, if you do a rotate command, for example, the base point is automatically going to be the base point of your, of your block. Of course, you can specify it differently if you didn't want to use the insertion point of the block as your rotation base point. But that's what it will automatically be if you don't specify any other point. So how do we reuse blocks now that we've modified them, we've deleted them, we've defined them? Uh, various ways to get blocks into your drawing. So we've seen you can do insert. You can browse for DWG files. You can insert blocks that are already defined in your current drawing. But in mass, how do we have a library? How do we pull blocks in if we don't want to do them on a uh, one at a time browsing for files? There are a couple of ways to do that. One of the ways that people commonly use is by using the tool palettes. And the tool palettes you can bring up by doing Control-3, or you can also pull it up through the options in the ribbon. But Control-3 for me is the quickest. So when you install AutoCAD, you'll have a lot of tool palettes that are built by default. And if you're wondering what the lightning bolt is, that indicates that it is a dynamic block as opposed to a block which is not dynamic. And we have a whole different webinar that talks about dynamic blocks and what they are. So we won't get into that here, but suffice it to say that there's a difference between dynamic blocks and regular blocks, which are not dynamic. So let's just pick something that, like this here, this valve imperial. All you have to do is click it. Now these have attributes, which we have another webinar to cover attributes in blocks because it's it can be pretty in-depth. But attributes are ways by which you can uh, have input for text and various values that you might have for a block that you need to reuse the block geometry over and over, but the text and the values for the type and the part and things might change. So you'd be prompted for it every time. So now that's one way to get a block into your drawing is from the palette, but how do we get the blocks into the palettes? A few different ways to do that. The easiest though is if you've saved your current drawing, and let's call it contains blocks. Let's take this block here and you just grab the insertion point and you can drag it over to your drag it over to your palettes. If I could do it right, it'd work. <laughs> there we are. There we go. So now there's the my new block sitting on my palette. And if I open up a brand new drawing, which doesn't contain any blocks at all, I can just click my new block and put it in there from the palette. The way that this works is it keeps track of the location of the source DWG file. If that ever changes, you can redefine the, the tools on the palettes, but again, tool palettes is another entire webinar unto itself, so we won't get too much into that. I simply wanted to show how tool palettes can be used to store 
libraries full of blocks as you see here and each tab has its own set of blocks you might have your company parts that you reuse over and over in your drawings and you want to have them ready and available to you at any time when you're making new drawings and tool palettes is a great way to do that another way by which we can do the same sort of thing in bringing in blocks is you can use the design center and design center has been around for a long time I think it's largely underused, but uh, we hope to change that by getting this information out there. You can maybe take this information and go forth and use the Design Center. And here's the power of the Design Center. What we'll do is we'll look in our sample directory that comes with AutoCAD. Uh, you can see down here at the bottom what the path to that is, the program files, Autodesk, AutoCAD, sample. And within the sample folder, you have several folders that have drawing files. Let's go into the Design Center one here, and let's take a look at this CMOS integrated circuits. Now, one of the things that you can find out about inside the definition of this drawing, this CMOS integrated circuits DWG file, is what kind of blocks it has. Now, you can do all kinds of other things with it. You can bring dim styles and layers in, but for the purposes of this webinar, we're going to focus on blocks as we have the rest of the hour. So, blocks, if we double click this, all of these are blocks that are defined within this single file. And to get them into your current drawing, it's as simple as dragging them in. And now this block from this CMOS integrated circuits DWG file is now a part of my brand new drawing that I just made. Same goes for any of these. And just like any other blocks that you might bring in, you can go into the block editor. Now you notice here, my insertion point is here on the top left uh, corner here on this line. Maybe we want to change that. So using the block editor, we can change anything about these blocks that we might want to, including the insertion point. Maybe we want to make it the geometric center again, like we did on the other one. For a, a circuit, you probably don't want to do that, but just for the purposes of demonstration, that's what we're doing here. We'll close it. We'll save the change. And now if we do an insertion of that same block again, the insertion point where you see the crosshairs is dead center in the middle of the thing. So that's the design center, and it is a very powerful way to browse within existing drawings that have blocks defined within them. And this may be your block library. You may use a folder full of DWG files or maybe just one DWG file, depending on how you categorize things, to store your blocks. So in this case, we've got all these circuit blocks in this particular drawing. Uh, maybe we've got another drawing that's full of fasteners, and we look at the blocks in here, and you see all these screws uh, as different shapes and lengths and whatnot. Um, same goes for this other fasteners one. Let's see what we've got in here, more screws. But as you can see here, just as with the tool palettes, each tab of the tool palettes may be a different category of blocks that are each in their own individual DWG file. Similarly, with Design Center, you may store a bunch of blocks inside of one DWG file and use the Design Center to bring them in as you're seeing here. So like the kitchens has light switches and microwaves and phone jacks. Everything you'd find in a kitchen, you find in this kitchen's DWG file. So there's more than one way to use blocks. And hopefully, uh, we're showing you ways that you maybe didn't know about and can work into your workflows. So Design Center, it's an oldie but a goodie. You access it by just typing DC. I can't think of any faster way to get it. Uh, you can launch it from the ribbon as well. Uh, tool palettes, control three, brings up your tool palettes. That's the way to get that up there. All right. So at this point, I want to open it up. It's pretty, pretty much the end of the presentation that we had prepared on blocks. And we'll go for questions at this point and see what we've got. Uh, let's take a look. Let me pop this questions thing out here. Looks like Bryce has been taking care of most of this in there.
Ah, indeed. Good point, Adam. Control 2 indeed is the design center. Just like Control 3 brings up your tool palettes, Control 2 brings up the design center. And uh, one thing about the design center I also want to mention while we're talking about design center is the blocks that you can access uh, through them. We used to have a tab in the design center called DC Online. And what that was was a tab that you'd click on in design center and it would access an FTP site on our web page uh, or our website uh, and it would it was just filled with blocks there was an FTP site filled with DWG files and you could just drag them right in uh, from our FTP site via the design center interface so a few years back we did away with that and we moved to the seek interface and what that is is seek.autodesk.com and actually I could probably just bring that up here and we'll show it real quick we'll go seek autodesk.com and it is a location from which you can download free blocks uh, as you can see here lots of them uh, let's look for chairs just for kicks uh, if I spelled chairs it'd probably get the right results huh chairs there we go so as you can see here, there are a lot of different chairs from different manufacturers you can pull in. Uh, you've got DWGs, you've got DWFs, you've got PDFs of these, uh, you've got um, uh, program uh, files you can pull down to open up in Revit. All kinds of different chairs. So that's just a small sampling of what you can find here on the Seek website. And honestly, I think this does a much better job representing the blocks that you can get as compared to the old DC online. It's just a different way to access the same kind of content. It's all categorized. You can use the uh, options here on the left to look for what narrow down things by what you're looking for. Maybe you're only looking for office furniture, for example, and that would narrow it down to only drawings and of chairs that are specified to be office furniture, etc. And same thing goes with kitchens and electrical equipment and that sort of thing. Uh, so Seek is a powerful tool. If you haven't checked it out before, go try it out. See, you might find some blocks that you want to use. And again, just because a block is that way, when you get it, the power of the block editor is you can go in and make limitless changes to the blocks so that they work for how you want them to. So let's take a look into the questions section here. Uh, so Doug, looks like you're having troubles with the Design Center in AutoCAD Architecture 2017. I'm not sure why that would be slow for you, but it, uh, assuming you're looking at the same blocks in the same locations, that's uh, a difficult question to answer right off the top of my head, but it's something that certainly if you wanted to submit a support case, we would be happy to get into with you and investigate it a little bit more. Perhaps we could duplicate the problem here and then dig in a little further with the uh, our resources and figure out why that's happening. Uh, let's see. Question about the difference or benefit of using the base point command to change the block insertion point. You know, to me, uh, thanks Brad for the question. I, I much prefer just straight up editing the block and putting the base point where I want it. Um, the the base point command I've never had much luck with it I I just I like the result better going in and using the the block editor but in theory it's the same in this the same result you're using it for the same purpose you want to change the the insertion point of your block so you know functionality wise there really shouldn't be any difference to answer that question um, so by layer and by block that's something we wanted to go over again real quick we can do that certainly. So let's pull up, um, let's do an insertion again. Uh, let's browse for my, my handy chair again. All right. Oops, looks like it's bigger than the existing geometry I've got here. All right, so let's let's get in, let's dig into the block editor on this guy. 
So if we take a look at all the polylines that make up this chair object, their color and their line weight for that matter and their transparency for that matter and the materials, they're all set to obtain those properties by layer. So if, for example, the layer seat had a line type that was, let's see, let's set the line type to by layer. So we'll show what that does. We'll save our changes and we'll change our seat. Now let's go into layer properties and change the line type for this layer. I want to load some more line types here. Let's make this one, for example, or how about this? Okay. So now the line type for the seat layer is no longer continuous. It's going to be that dashed one we loaded up here. And it may be that the, let's take it, it may be that the, uh, let's take a look. It may be that the lines aren't long enough to realize the, the dashes here. But let's stick with something like color because it, it, it pops out here. So let's change the, let's do what we did previously. Let's select these two objects and let's change their definition of color to get it by block instead of by layer. So the color of the block is what? Let's take a look. The color is by layer. It's on layer zero. Layer zero's color is white. Let's go ahead and change the color of the block to yellow. So the, the block itself is yellow. So any object defined within the block whose color is set to by block will now get its color from whatever you've set the block to. Whereas all these other objects, the outline, all this that's blue, their color is by layer. So whatever layer we put them on, So let's take this whole chair and put it on a different layer. Let's put it on, uh, which one did I change here? Seat other. Let's put the whole layer, uh, whole chair on seat other. Of course, we've changed the color to yellow. Let's change it back to by layer here. So the block gets its color by layer. So the block is the turquoise color. And since the block is the turquoise color, the by block objects inside of it also get the turquoise color. Now if we look at the definition of the block though, these other, this is still on the seat layer. So even though the block may be inserted on a particular layer, all of the individual objects within the block might be on separate layers. And that's why this outside line and some of these other lines remain blue because they're still on the seat layer, which is still blue. Again, all this will be up on our YouTube channel. So hopefully the, you, know, you can watch this part over and, and, and really understand the distinction between by block, by layer, by object. So at this point, uh, the only other thing we had left, I wanted to throw out one more quick poll. And I know polls aren't everybody's favorites, but they help us to tailor the content a little going forward. So let's do our last poll, which is, and here it is. And we'll launch that. Give everybody a few more moments to answer that. Hopefully you learned something from these. And again, 
as I always say, it's not a replacement for training. It's just a way to hopefully expose you to commands and areas of the program you may not have explored before and may not have known about. You may have seen them and you think, oh, I'll skip over that. We, did, we didn't cover that in training, so I'm not going to even try. But uh, hopefully, this gives you some information to, to move forward. So we'll close this out here, quickly share the results with you here as we are getting toward the top of the hour. So it looks like majority of, majority of you out there have seen something new during this webinar that you didn't uh, necessarily know before about the program, which is great, and that's that's our goal here. So I think uh, as long as that number remains high, we'll feel pretty good about that. So as always, we certainly appreciate you um, attending these. Uh, we want to Invite you to join us every Thursday at this time. Same link, same everything, and uh, here are some additional resources for this week's particular topic. The blocks, links here that should help you out there. Again, the Autodesk YouTube channel is youtube.com/autodesk, and all these webinars are up there. So hopefully. We see you again real soon. Thanks again for joining us.